Let's spend a few moments here looking at the story of Lazarus and the rich man. In Luke 16, 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen fared suffragely every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of swords, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his swords. It came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels in Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in his flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember thou in thy lifetime thou receivest good things, likewise Lazarus evil things. Now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Besides all this, <clears throat> between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from thence cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. And then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that they may testify unto them, lest they also come unto this place of torment. Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. He say, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they would repent. He said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded the one rose from the dead. So there it is. And as you can see, it's red letter. I mean, this is the words of Jesus Christ himself. Now, we have a rich man. He's clothed in the finest great clothes. He's rich. He's got the luxury. And we have a beggar named Lazarus. And he laid at the gate of the rich man, full of sores, waiting just for crumbs. Notice we know the name of the beggar. But we don't know the name of the man that is rich in hell. And in hell, you have no name. You're nameless. Your name's not in the land's book of life. It ain't in hell. And both men died. The wages of sin is death. Everybody sins. Whether you're rich, you're poor, whoever you are, you sin. And you're going to die because you are a sinner. I dealt with one guy one time. He never sinned. And one the, the the process of the conversation is well, you tell your family when they bury your dead body. I will stand over your grave and say, "Aha, you're a sinner." The wages of sin is death. The rich man had the luxuries, and the and the poor man Lazarus, he just wanted crumbs. And the only friend that Lazarus had was the dog, unclean animal unclean to the Levitical law. And they licked his sores. He had sores. He had no medical care. I've met homeless people. I've dealt with homeless people with sores. Begging about. He came to pass the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. He didn't go to heaven. Jesus Christ had not suffered and died According to the scripture, was not buried, rose again the third day, according to scripture. Before the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, those that pleased God and obeyed God at his word went to a place called Abraham's bosom. And the angels carried him into his bosom. Angels don't carry Christians to glory. I've heard some Christians, well, I've seen angels enter the room. The Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Angels won't have time to come and get you at your departing. 
That's how quick it will be. Amazing how people don't study their Bible and they'll be found ashamed. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, the beggar went off to Abraham's bosom. The rich man in hell, riches, status, fame, popularity, does not get you out of hell. Not one bit. Being in torments. The, the Holy Spirit through the Lord Jesus Christ writes to us through the medical doctor. That there is a hell. Read it, Luke 6.23. There is a hell. There it is. And in hell you're in torment. And in hell you have your eyes. And in hell you can see. Now today you're in hell you cannot see Abraham far off. Abraham's not there. After the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, paradise is gone to glory. They just stare off into a darkness. And Lazarus in his bosom. He saw Lazarus. He saw Abraham. He has eyes. And he cried and said. So a man in hell is able to speak. A man in hell has a voice box. He has a mouth and tongue. And he knows Father Abraham. Abraham's been dead many, 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 many years. And yet he knew Abraham. When Moses and Elijah showed up on the mountain of transfiguration, Peter knew who they were. He says, have mercy on me. A man that is in torment in hell wants mercy. And you'll never get mercy in hell. Never. And look at it. Send Lazarus. You know, this rich man probably had servants. He was rich. And he would say, servant, do this. Servant, do that. Go do this. Go get my paper. Fix my meal. Do this. The rich man in hell is giving orders to Abraham. Abraham, you tell Lazarus, go do this. The conduct and character of the rich man has not changed in hell. I ordered people on the earth and I'm going to order people in hell. If you have a boss you can't stand and you and your boss go to hell together, you're not going to be able to stand that boss in hell. Because he's going to have the same character and you're going to have the same character. He orders Abraham, the father of the Hebrews, the father of the Jews, more faithful. And he has the nerve to say, Abraham, you tell Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. The rich man remembers the refreshing of water. The rich man in hell remembers how thirst quenching water was. The rich man in hell has no water. And cool my tongue. There's the tongue. My tongue needs cool my tongue. He needs air conditioning. And he doesn't get air conditioning. He doesn't ask for a cold water. He just says, listen, just dip the tip of the finger in water. This is a little tiny drip of water. And that will cool my tongue. As Luke 16, 23 says, being in torment. He doesn't cry in hell. 
It says he cried. I ain't the crying of tears. He screamed out. Because if he had tears, he would, he would take one of them little tears and put it. But he don't have no more tears. He has no more sweat. Because if he takes take a little bit of sweat and Oh, there's no moisture at all. He's yelling at Abraham and giving Abraham orders. And the order that he says, I just want a little drop of water to cool my tongue. He doesn't say, get me out of here. Notice he did not say, we've read the whole passage, get me out. A lost man in hell knows I'm never getting out of this place. And if I could just get some mercy and relief. He says, for I am tormented. God, Jesus told us in verse 23, they're in torment. The man in hell says, I'm in tormented. The rich man finally agreed with Jesus. If there's one thing that rich man and Jesus could get together about, there's torment in hell. He says, I am tormented in this flame. That's remarkable. And we come over here to the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Pain to extreme, teased, harass. But Abraham said, son, the rich man was Jewish. This would be a great, 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 great grandson of Abraham. The man is a child of God and he's burning in hell today. Don't tell me I belong to a special family. I have a rich unity. I can trace my family tree back. I can spit on the thing and they can tell me where my family comes to. This man was a Hebrew. This man was a, of the children of Abraham. And he's in hell. Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth good things. Where's the rich man's mansion? Where's the rich man's gold and silver? It ain't with him. He left his gold and rich and riches on the earth. And the rich man in hell has now become poor. Having Nothing. And of all the riches that he had, he had a gate. He had servants. And there's one wealth he does not have. H2O. A little drop. There is something that he does not have. In hell, of all the gold and silver that he did have, and servants, and worldly material goods, in hell, he does not have and will never get mercy. You see, hell was made for the devil and his angels. Satan does not know what mercy is. Satan does not offer mercy. Satan does not give mercy. In the abode of the house of hell of Satan, you get no mercy. 
you get tormented. And likewise, Lazarus, evil thing. Now, that's not Lazarus did wicked. Evil things is he had the sword. He had no friends. He didn't have a good balanced meal as such as the rich man had. And Lazarus had no home, no Medicare, no medical, no food. And Lazarus now is comforted by God with the riches of God and the riches of Jesus Christ. The poor man has become rich in God and in mercy. And the rich man on the earth has become poor. But how now, now he is comforted. Lazarus is comforted today. And thou art tormented. He's backing up what the rich man said in verse 24. The rich man said, I'm tormented. And Abraham said, well, you're tormented. Nothing I can do for you. Abraham can't help this man in hell. Somebody you knew on the planet Earth, Lazarus, can't help you out of hell. You're in torments. You're being tormented without mercy. And then Abraham tells us, besides all this, between us and you, between us and Abraham's bosom, my bosom, and you, hell, there's a great gulf there. You know, Jesus walked on the water with the disciples. And Jesus is going to walk a great goal. He did walk a great goal. When he died, he went into hell and deposited our, our sins in hell, grabbed the keys of death in hell. He, he preached to, the, to, the, to the, the, the souls in hell. And then he crossed that goal like he crossed the sea. He said, I got an appointment with, with, a, with a thief. I told a thief I'd be with him today in paradise. And Jesus crossed that. He said, the great go fix so that they which would pass from thence can to you cannot. Neither they pass to us that would come from thence. But Jesus did. Jesus crossed over. What man can't do, God can do. Then he said to the rich man, I pray thee, I pray thee, Father, they're both acknowledging their Jewish roots. That that would send him Lazarus. Look at him order Abraham again. Lazarus, tell Lazarus, get me a drop of water. Abraham, you tell Lazarus to go to my family. Look at him. The, the rich man who gave orders is giving orders again. Piety is not found in hell. Proud and arrogance. You're going to find in hell a bunch of people ordering you around. Well, you know, if I go to hell, no one's going to tell me what to do. No, no. You're going to have a whole bunch of people tell you what to do. You're going to have royalty. You're going to have presidents. You're going to have the rich and famous. You're going to have, they're going to try to tell you what to do in hell. What they did on the earth, their character on the earth, does not change in the flame of hell. If they were a jerk on the earth, they're going to be a jerk in hell. If they were hated on the, on the earth, they'll be hated in hell. If they were loved on the earth, there's no love in hell. They'll be hated in hell. There's no love in hell. We sent him to my father's house. For I have five brethren. Five is the number of death. Jesus is recording a conversation of a man in hell. 
and Abraham in Abraham's bosom. God, Jesus Christ. You can't make this up. For I have five brethren, that he, Lazarus, may testify unto them. Least they also come unto this place of torment. Torment, 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 torment. You know what that man in hell said? Go tell my family about hell. He did not say, go tell my family to uh, come to church, go to temple. It's not what he said. He said, go to my family and preach hell. Jesus Christ had not said yet, go in all the world and preach the gospel. That's later. That's after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. People, men, and women in hell don't want you to invite your family to church. They don't want to invite your family, to their family to temple. They want you to preach the gospel. They want you to tell them about hell and tell them that their family in hell does not want them to go. Because the common misconception that Satan has to the people of the world Oh, we're going to have friends in hell. We're going to party in hell. And things are going to be lovely and great in hell. That's a lie. Your mother in hell, your father in hell, your brother in hell, your sister in hell, your, your brother in hell, your son in hell, your daughter in hell, your grandma in hell, your grandpa in hell, your friend in hell says, Don't come to hell and today a man in hell would say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved tell my family don't come here tell them about hell and when you get a Christian come up, they are not to be preaching about hell 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 you're upset in a man in hell you're upset in a person in hell. They want you to tell their family, don't come. Look what he says in verse 28. Least they also come into this place of torment. Now, maybe on earth the man said, hey, oh, we're going to have a party in hell. We're going to drink in hell. We're going to have a good time in hell. And now that he's in hell, he says, don't come. One of our things as the Haber Family Ministry we have in our church, we have, we've always had, don't go to hell. I got sick and tired of hearing people say, go to hell, go to hell, go to hell. Our statement of our ministry is, don't go to hell. That's what the rich man said. Don't. Tell them not to come. And Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets. They don't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Pauline epistles, and Hebrews, and James, and John, and Revelation. They're not written yet. That lost man, that rich man in hell is under the law and the prophets. There it is. Let them hear them. He didn't say, you know, go to He said, let them hear the word of God. And the word of God at that point is Moses and the prophets. Well, shall we not have a, a fellowship dinner? Shall we not have fun and games and all that? That's not what Abraham said. The rich man in hell said, preach hell. Abraham said, preach the word of God. 1630, he said to the rich man, Nay, Father Abraham. Look at him disagreeing with Abraham. Abraham is where God wants him. Abraham's bosom. Paradise. The rich man is in hell, in the absence of God, in the absence of mercy. 
tormented, and he's arguing with a man that done right. He's arguing with a man that is faithful, and he's telling the man that is right with God, Nay, I know better. That's the classification of a rich person. He has still not changed, and he will never change. And if, if you know someone who is hard and stubborn and will not listen to reasoning and they die and go to hell, they're not going to change. If you know somebody who's demanding they die and go to hell, they're not going to change. I mean, if you got a boss who's terrible and, and wicked and, and just, that'd be all the one good reason to get saved. What's that? That you two don't end up in hell and you have to live with him for all eternity as wicked and vile as a boss he is and he'll be like that in hell. Get saved. You go to heaven, you go to New Jerusalem, and he goes to hell. So nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto him from the dead, you know, today they got these zombie apocalypse and all that. You know, Lazarus came up from the grave. Jesus Christ is going to come up from the grave. And 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 some of the bodies of the Old Testament saints are going to come up out of the grave for 40 days. Okay. Many Sadducees, Pharisees, high priests, Romans did not get saved. Jesus Christ arose from the grave three days and three nights, according to the scripture, testified by an angel, testified over 400 people. And the Bible records in John, well, you know, just tell them you, you fell asleep. We'll back you up. They didn't believe. Now, the death, burial, and resurrection hasn't happened yet, but Abraham's right. And there'll be some people, who, oh, show me a resurrection. Show me God. Show me Jesus. The nation of Israel saw God and heard God, Exodus 19, and the entire wilderness journey was a flop after they saw and heard God. You seen God, you seen a resurrection, you getting great signs and wonder is not going to guarantee you turning to God and doing right. Abraham's correct like that. They will repent, he says, verse 30. They will repent. See that there? Do you know repent is absent from many churches today? That You don't need to repent. Just say this prayer. Just do a good, good deed. Just be happy in the Lord. And, and just be a wonderful good duper and all that. And, you know... The man in hell said, repent. The man in hell knew how not to go to hell. Repent. The man in hell knows what to preach. Tell him about hell. Too bad many of your Baptists and liberals don't know what to preach. Acts 16.31, he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, the Old Testament, the only thing they have right now, the word of God, neither will they persuade it, though one rose from the dead. You can have your movies. You can have your fellowships. You can have your gift cards. You can have your fun. You can have whatever your programs Whatever your extra curriculum is, you can do whatever extra worldly things and all that. If it's not the Word of God, it 
there is no persuasion. If there's no repentance, there's no salvation. If there's no hell, well, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Saved from what? Of course it's got to be hell. That's a rich man who's in hell today who will be cast into the lake of fire. It's a conversation recorded that's actually happened or did happen and it's recorded by the Lord Jesus Christ. And people say it's an allegory. People say it, it, it's a parable. People say it's not true. You're saying that Jesus Christ lied? You in trouble. I take this 100% true. I preach hell. I preach repentance. I preach heaven. I preach the word of God. 